The Big Red Kitchen Show is brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products provided by Consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza, Food Styling, and Photography. Welcome to the Big Red Kitchen Show, the show about former Nebraska football players who love to cook, big guys who are comfortable in the kitchen, who enjoy making dishes for family and friends. On today's show, you're going to hear them talk about where they've been and what they've been doing since they last, uh, since you last saw them at the uh, University of Nebraska. We'll be hearing about their favorite recipe. We're going to talk about how to create that recipe for your own home. Plus, we're going to be doing a little demonstration on a very interesting topic today, homemade cheese. I think you'll love it. Plus, we'll be doing an, a beverage pairing that will really enhance today's featured dish. My name is Sherry Potter, and I'm a professional food stylist and food photographer, and I love testing out new recipes in my studio kitchen. And today's dish is extremely wonderful. It's a yummy, gooey, delicious macaroni and cheese by Jay Gates. I think you're going to really want to try it this fall. But before we start the show, I'd like to introduce you to my lovely and very talented co-host, Angela. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Waltman. I love sports. I love to cook and eat. And <laughs> I have made my career in marketing. So I was very happy when I was able to bring all of these together and publish Big Red Recipes, which is our cookbook featuring 45 former Husker football players. Uh, these guys love to cook. They submitted some wonderful recipes from family, from friends, and things that they had perfected in their own kitchen. Um, they've also given us some wonderful charities that the book supports. We've got a lot of local and national charities that are doing good all over the country. And so this book supports those as well. Definitely encourage all of you to go take a look at BigRedRecipes.com. You can see all of the recipes, all the guys that are involved, learn more about their charities and get some fun behind the scenes um, information about all of our guys. But we're not talking about the book right now, we're talking about our guest. Yes. He does happen to be Jay Gates and Jay has submitted a wonderful dish. I know <laughs> I'm a fan of the carbs and of the mac and cheese and this one I know that he has really worked on to perfect and make it wonderful. But no reason for me to tell you more about Jay's recipe. Why don't we hear from Jay ourselves? Perfect. All right, Jay Perfect. Gates. Thanks so doing? much for coming Good to see on. You. Welcome How's it to going? our show. Good to see you. It's going well. Wow. Thank you for coming today. We appreciate Glad it. Glad I could be here. You bet. So the creamy mac and cheese. When I got that recipe, I was like, okay, I need to try <laughs> this one. So tell us a little bit about how you came upon the perfect mac and cheese. Well, I have two little kids at home, so it was trial and error. Um, making mac and cheese is always big for kids at home, and so I would make it for dinner on a Friday night or Saturday night, and each time they would eat it, and then mm -hmm. I would change it, and they'd say, oh, get it better, get it better. And so finally, <laughs> it's, it's where it is today, and they love it, and they demand for it. They'll ask for daddy's mac and cheese. So it's, I'm not messing with the recipe anymore. I just serve it <laughs> whenever they ask for it. It's awesome. delicious. It's very, very good. Now, we have that in our appetizer section of the book. Do you usually serve it as a main dish, or do you pair it with something else? How does your family eat it? My kids eat it as dinner. Macaroni and cheese <laughs> qualifies as a full-blown dinner at my house. So they eat that as a dinner. Um, it goes great with, you know, food on a, as a side dish for the adults, but it's good stuff. I like it. And sometimes my wife, she just, she'll make it a dinner just by herself, too. Oh, you, you let her cook? She does cook, but uh, she likes. She lets me make the mac and cheese. That's awesome. <laughs> You've perfected it. You should get to make it, right? I do, and yes. the kids demand that I make it. Oh, yes. They know. <laughs> now, when guys cook. cook a lot in the kitchen, I always wonder, how did they come about this? Were they cooking when they were little? Did mom show them? Did dad show them? Tell us your story about how you learned to cook. I started as a, at seven or eight years old. My mom is a really good cook, 
and she told me that she didn't think I should ever have to depend on a woman to cook. So <laughs> she started enough. teaching me as a little kid making mm -hmm. eggs and omelets on the stove, and then my dad threw in his skills on the grill. So I'm kind of a well-rounded cook, and I'm, I'm the cook of the house. So I do a little bit of everything. Lucky, I like cooking lucky breakfast. Lucky lady. And yeah. Lucky yeah. lady. You've got you. Exactly. <laughs> Now you played for us in 1997, I which did. was kind of the, the salad days of the Cornhuskers. <laughs> so tell us a little, you've not heard that term? No, what are the salad That's days? That's a cooking term. That's like oh. the great days. Oh, okay. Banner days. Salad days. Exactly. Salad days, okay. Get rings for salad days. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. So tell us a little bit, a right cornerback, correct? I was a white right corner, I was a walk-on. Um, actually, I didn't play all four years. I knew a lot of the guys on the team. and. Mm -hmm. They got all those big rings from 94 and 95, so <laughs> I decided, hey, I want to try out and walk on, and I was fortunate enough to make the team and stay on it for the year, and then we went 13-0 and won the national title, so it was kind wow. of a storybook career for me. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, why go any further? Exactly, and then, I just, then I just quit football. I walked away 13-0, <laughs> I figured I was done. Exactly. You can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. no. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since you left the university. Uh, I've been in the corporate world doing um, insurance and risk management. Uh, I currently work for an Applebee's franchise as director of risk management, so I'm kind of in charge of risk management department, and I am a, I still stay close to the game of football. I'm an official, so I do uh, oh. high school and college football officiating, really? so I'm still close to the game and do a lot of uh, the season's getting ready to start, so we just had our first high school game last week, and then uh, the college game starts this weekend. So. so you're one of the guys with the stripes on? I am one of the guys with the stripes on. Oh, Every I love Friday you and Saturday. Guys. Yes, indeed. I love you guys. Does that mean we can yell at you? You can. I've learned how to tune <laughs> coaches and, and players out. So, yeah, you can yell and you won't get a response. I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> we'll try that later. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so, your foundation is the Foreman Foundation. Right. And we've already heard a little bit about the Foreman fan Foundation from the man himself, Jay Foreman. Mm -hmm. So, we've got two Jays supporting the same foundation. Don't blame us if we get confused. That is true. <laughs> um, but he told us a little bit more about the foundation, but I want to hear from you about your friendship with Jay. You met each other, and when you're on the team, tell us more. Exactly. Jay was a, Jay's about a year or two younger than I am, and so he was a freshman when I was a junior, senior, and uh, we became fast friends from his first day on campus. Uh, <laughs> I used to throw a lot of parties back in my day when I was younger, and Jay was an attendee of those parties. Oh, yes. And uh, that's where we, be we became friends. We've been friends ever since. He was the best man at my wedding. Uh, we play golf all the time together still to this day, and he comes over and actually came over and helped coach my son a little bit on football just this past weekend. So he and I remain close, and that's why I'm helping out the Foreman Foundation. That's awesome. Do you guys cook together? Uh, on the grill. We'll throw Ooh, stuff yeah. on the grill together and then go play around the golf or do that after a round of golf. Yeah, so yeah. we do. Wonderful. So Applebee's is where you work. Do they let you cook at all? Um, I have been in the kitchen at some of the Applebee's restaurants. I don't think uh, we tell the guests that, that I'm back here cooking. <laughs> but I can make a mean wonton taco if you stop by a local okay. Applebee's. Awesome. So two kids. Um, they love what you cook. Do you get them in the kitchen? Do you get them involved? I do. I've just started. Jackson, I said, is, is nine. And he's just like me. I teach him. Uh, he can make an omelet. He can... Uh, cook scrambled eggs. So he's learning just like I did. Same age, passing kind of same on, process. Passing on mom's trying to, exactly, rules. Well, exactly. And trying to get uh, <laughs> yes. my daughter up and running so she can she can be the same way. Absolutely. Awesome. Now being an athlete, how has that changed the way that you eat, cook, from the time you played for the university and the training table days, from getting out of professional sports? Well, I never played, sports, yeah, collegiate, collegiate sports. sports. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how your eating habits have changed. Well, I think I took for granted what kind of shape I was in when I was playing football. You don't mm -hmm. realize you burn those calories, you can eat what you want and do what right. you want. So yeah. that changes, as we all know, as you age. And uh, as an official, you know, working these college games, I have to stay in shape. And these kids are 22 years old right. every year. I'm the one who's getting older. Right. So it makes uh, a lot of running. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of running. running and a lot of being in shape to get those, beat those guys to the goal line still. Mm -hmm. So uh, the diet and exercise are still really important for, for me right now. So I have to try and eat reasonably healthy. Um, but uh, I can have mac and cheese with a lot of calories every now and then, too. And everybody <laughs> needs their cheat meal, right? Exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly right. what this is, a cheat meal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. Everything That's within delicious. moderation is what they say. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And we love that um, we're kind of coming up with some new ways to make your mac and cheese, which Sherry's going to tell us all yeah, about. I'm excited to learn something. I see we got a ninja here, so me you have too? to show me how it works. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like, the, I like the ninja. So should we talk a little bit about the recipe? I, I so. It was really delicious. I, I fixed it um, just today. So delicious. I loved it. But when I was making it up, um, I take it you're, you're a fan of the Velveeta. 
That's what I use. Velveeta is my friend. I have loved Velveeta since I was a little Velveeta girl. It's my favorite cheese. I, I make it a rule. I never buy the other kind. You know, the processed cheese foods. Right. You know, you, Velveeta is my standard go-to. So you're a Velveeta man. I'm a Velveeta guy. Cool. Name brand. It's in the recipe. Yes. I talked to them and said, "This isn't Jay Gates's recipe." It's real. It's real. Velveeta. It's real Velveeta. <laughs> However, one of the things I learned when I was doing Velveeta was it has so many things in it. I, you know, like 30 different things in it. And, you know, we're, the new thing now is eating healthy and right. clean and, and, you know, things with less than six ingredients in them. That's kind of the clean style right now. So as I was thinking about putting this recipe together, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I could figure out how to do a Velveeta, kind of homemade Velveeta. And, you know, you can find anything online, right? I'm right? sure you can. You can, you can. But, you know, is it any good? So you two are going to help us determine if it's any good. But, Jay, I'm going to have you make us some Velveeta cheese. Have you ever made Velveeta cheese? Nope, uh, Hy-Vee has it right down the street I from my know, house. I know, I know. I've learned that that's where I can get it. I know, but what I found when I was putting this recipe together for the, for the Velveeta cheese, this costs about $6.89. So it's an expensive piece of food, but you can actually make it for $4. Wow, I know. show me how. I, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's like we trained you. Exactly. But we didn't. Honestly, and we And we're going to do it with the ninja. We are doing it with the ninja, and you are excited about the ninja. I am. So, the, we're just doing half the recipe today. So, it, we start out with just good old shredded. So, we're making shredded, cheese out of cheese. We're making cheese out of cheese, but this is real cheese with only two ingredients in it. You know, milk and, and some, some bacteria? bacteria. That's it. So, we have some real cheese for us to use. The other ingredient in it is just plain old milk powder, dry milk, dry carnation milk, okay. a couple tablespoons of that, and another simple ingredient, plain old Knox gelatin. So those are the ingredients that Do are in... Do you have in gelatin in your kitchen? Probably. I have jello <laughs> that my kids Can will you eat. Use right. jello, Sherry? Well, if you want a flavored cheese. <laughs> Fruit punch cheese? Fruit, yes, yes. Well, that's Yum. the, and the beauty of making this cheese dish is the fact that you can actually flavor it up. So if you want to do a pepper, a pepper jack cheese, you can chop up your own jalapeno peppers and put them in this recipe when you put it all together. It's quite easy to do. Or you can add some cumin to it. You can add different spices to it. So you can really have a lot of fun and create your own special cheese recipes. And think of how excited your friends would be if you said, I made the cheese today. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Next wow. time I'm you invite Jay over, this. put some ghost peppers in right. there and don't tell so them. I will. The only thing you need is a little pan, one of these little loaf pans. You can buy them at the store, a little piece of uh, cellophane wrap. And Angela, I'm gonna have you put press that oh in the bottom of that pan. You'll you be know good. it's one of my weaknesses. I, I am terrible. You are, no, no. With plastic. <laughs> the, last, the last ingredient in this is going to be hot boiling water. So we have some hot water here. So Give Jay, Jay the hot boiling water. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put have you add the ingredients to our our little ninja here which you are so excited about using. Add the milk and the jello. That's all you're going to add. The plastic wrap is sticking to nothing. It's good. You've got it done there right. Okay. You put your jello in there. And then we're going to measure out a half a cup of boiling water. And I'm left-handed, so I'm always, always have to be real careful around my guests so I don't burn them. But I'm going to have you dump that in there for me. Okay. Look at that mixture. That looks really good. It does look really good. <laughs> it does look right. like jello. We're going to just put the little lid back on the top of this baby here. Okay. It always, it's I think much it has to click somehow. I have a food processor that I always, there. that's my... Yeah. Mistake, I never make it oh, click oh. and then I'll go. There. Okay. Yeah. Now we're just going to mix that See together. How I do that? Yeah, I'm yeah. just sitting there and this just means it does the work for you. <laughs> you don't have to do much. I know. So you've got it all mixed together. That's all we need to do. And then I'm going to have you take the lid back off of it again. Okay, I'm going to have you dump that cheese right back in there. Stir it all in there. So now we've got the jello, the, the milk powder, 
and throw the lid the back on the gelatin. The gelatin. Oh. And again, put her back in there. And then mix that up. And you're just gonna mix it till it gets smooth. So it might take a couple minutes, but so it all will coagulate together. And then we're gonna dump it in that little pan that Angela has prepped for us. And I did it so well. And you did it so well. So we're incorporating some air in there, which is gonna make it nice and fluffy and gooey. Yeah, it looks like it's about looks done. Like it's done. Yeah, Let's I think check it so. out. Let's check it out. There was some explanation going on there that you guys probably did not pick up on. But the ninja is quiet. It is. It is. Wow, look at that. It's just amazing. Yeah. That's really nice. It's really gooey and ooey. The nice thing about the ninja is you just pull the the little beaters right out of it. And then I'm gonna have you just stir it around with this little whisk. This is from our, our pampered chef. Um, consultant, we're going to have you mix it up just a little more, just make oh. sure we get it all mixed in there. It's like a little whisk. I have one of those at home, very useful. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Pampered Chef is amazing, don't you they think? They are, they I are. I have a lot of stuff in my kitchen. Do you? I love Pampered Chef. Now just plop that in that little container there and smooth it out as best you can. And wouldn't you say that's an easy process? It seems That was to be. really easy. Yeah, and that is basically it and then you refrigerate this for three hours. Now does this keep as well as the other Velveeta because I, I know that the other Velveeta as long as you keep it wrapped pretty well I don't think nuclear warfare can yeah, I don't think it expires. destroy that stuff. So it's is this the last. same or is it because it's more natural? This is it? natural you would want to put this in your refrigerator and keep it in your refrigerator. I keep well, my I keep my Velveeta in my refrigerator. How long do you, well, yeah, how but long how long before will you last? use it? The, this will last weeks and weeks. Okay. Yes according to the Velveeta people on YouTube you can use this. But you can use this in any recipe that you use Velveeta cheese. But like I said, you can flavor it up. You can do a lot of fun things with it. But I have a one that I did earlier oh, today. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Boom. Wanted, she should have put a big N on the top of it. I that could. Oh, amazing. you know, I, sh I could have. I could have. So Next let's. Next time, Sherry. Let's let's take a little. You want to just cut a little piece of that off? Cut and the cheese. <laughs> cut, that, cut that cheese up for us. Oh, cut the cheese. Would you like to taste that? Give yourself a little bite of that. I, that's that's a large bite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We might want to share that. What do you it's think? It's like Velveeta. Does it? It does. Right consistency? Yeah. You can pull it apart just like a Velveeta. We should, have done, we should have done a blind taste test. Who knew that you could make this at home? This I know. This is amazing. Isn't it amazing? It's fabulous. Can you imagine if you put some other spices in it, how much fun that would be? I'm gonna have to try this. You yeah. are gonna have to try it. It's really a lot of a, a lot of fun. I can I could take. Did you want some? I already tasted it earlier. And I was both gonna of our fingers. <laughs> and both of you. Well, I was gonna have you taste the real Velveeta. I mean, in compare. In compare, since since we, you know, since we don't have enough color. In the recipe. Color wise, what do you think? It's about him. the same color. Looks about the same. Similar, and we can just cut a little tiny oh, piece no, off Sherry's here. Cut Where's my? I am ten. Okay, in my heart. I'll let you guys share <laughs> I'm that. I'm a risk manager, so, so a cutting glove would be good. Yes. I, oh. <laughs> same about the same. Wow. Do, what do you think in between between the two? Which, which is better? It's pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. This one has more ingredients, but that one tastes just as good. Don't you think? Yeah. I know. I think it's Actually, a. I like that one better. Yeah. Than you made. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but anyway, but the nice thing about this, I think this is a little healthier for us. And if we're talking about health, I know that's your foundation. So I just thought, let's add a little healthy product to your mac and cheese and see if you like it better. I like that idea. I think that's really a lot of fun. I don't think my kids would notice the difference. I, uh, I doubt it very much. <laughs> <laughs> no. So anyway, I just thought it'd be a kind of a fun little, a fun little project for us to try here. And I always love to teach something new if I can, but I love this. And I'm glad to hear that you guys liked it as much as I did. So now you can go home and have some fun. Good so, stuff. Angela, yes. I think now that we've been tasting cheese, we should, we should talk about something that goes with cheese. You know Wine. what? Uh, martinis <laughs> go with anything, <laughs> including cheese. Um, but what do you usually feed? Obviously, two young kids, you're probably not knocking back martinis as you're eating your, your creamy mac and cheese. What do you guys normally have with this meal? Uh, macaroni and cheese goes great with red juice at my house. Red juice, red perfect. Juice, um, or for the adults, sometimes an adult beverage goes nice with it as well. Awesome. Well, what we have today from 
our friend John at Salt Restaurant. He always comes up with some great pairings for us. Today we have the Jimi Hendrix Martini. Sounds good. To go with the mac and cheese. And John says this is a botanical trip in a martini glass. So refreshing. Obviously we're, we're coming up on fall or we're in fall. Uh, this is a little bit of a summer drink, but you can have it year round. You know, everybody loves a martini. So basically what we have in this is Hendrix gin. Um, we have some sour, some OJ, some syrup, just to sweeten it up a bit in case you don't like the really dry martinis, which right. I don't. Um, some raspberry puree and some mint leaves. So John loves the shakers. That's how he makes mm -hmm. most of his drinks because it cools the drink without adding too much moisture and then you can strain out the ingredients so you have a nice smooth consistency. So we're gonna pour some ice. I'm gonna have you shake this up a bit. We like to have the football players do the shaking. That's right. Yeah. You guys have the strength. I think this one's ready to go. Perfect. <laughs> and we'll just pop off the top here. Go ahead and pour some of these. Isn't that pretty? That is pretty. It is pretty. I think it's the raspberry puree that gives it that nice color. Right. That's what that's what John was saying. It's the raspberry puree that gives it that, that pretty Perfect. pink color. And then mint leaves. You always have to put a nice little garnish on there. Throw some of those. Swirl it Why not a little we bit? give this a try? Yeah, swirl Thank it up you. so that you get a little bit of the flavor out of it. Sometimes you want to muddle those leaves so that it gets more right. in there, but Probably I think this was put more in of a shaker. garnish. Sure. Could have done that if you like a mint flavor. Mm -hmm. Cheers. 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 Here's to mac and cheese. That's right. Got a nice drink to go with it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Not bad. I'm not wow. a fan of I gin. Like but I like this. I like it. It's very, very nice. Yeah. It nice. goes with cheese. It goes with cheese. <laughs> yes, it does. John's a smart guy. That's right. He is a smart fella. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's nice, nice. Shall we ch do a little taste on the mac and cheese? I'm going to just put a little in this little dish here. Better than serving a bunch. And then we can just take, you guys take a little forkful and see what you think, how it goes. Since I'm going to keep talking, I don't want to be chewing while I'm talking. So... Come on, Jerry. It was so gooey, yummy, wonderful, mm. right out delicious. Of the oven, it's really good. Oh my gosh. And Tum it's on your pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. We won't. That's why we that. have the aprons from Corporate Creations. Yes. Our lovely oh, aprons. yes. So, so that's why you stuff. have it. Is, isn't that good? Yeah, Don't you really like good. that? I'm so rich and creamy and just mm. delicious. I thought it was, it's actually the best mac and cheese recipe that I've ever fixed. So, but I think it's all it's that really yummy good. cream and, and, and the Velveeta <laughs> that is. make it. It's good stuff. Can you use way. this in leftovers? Because I was going through one of my magazines the other day and they had mac and cheese stuffed meatloaf. Oh, wow. I, am, I, I have, have not taken it to that level. <laughs> I have not, but that's The kids like probably devour idea. it even Usually before. we just put a little milk yes. in it, rewarm in the microwave, and it's good mac to go. Mac and cheese definitely warms up well. Yes, so. it does. It's good so. two, three days later, that's so exactly. I think so. Does this taste just like yours? Does this have the homemade Velveeta in it? It has. I put the Velveeta in it. So the regular it Velveeta. Is, yep, okay. the regular Velveeta. Okay. Right, we weren't going to do both, so. Awesome. Well, I think this is a... One of my favorite recipes. You can't you can't beat a good mac and cheese. And why do it out of the box? No. When homemade is so do it much homemade better. and it doesn't take that long. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't take, take really any longer to do it homemade than it does to, to fix the box. You still have to boil the noodles and things like that. So uh, a little trick that I learned on doing this is you had put on your recipe, and uh, which I appreciated the fact that you have to really watch your, your cream and your Velveeta because they'll scald or they'll burn at the bottom. So you really have to watch that. So what I, a trick that I use is using a double boiler where you, you would fill up a, like a bigger pot with water and then put a smaller pot on the inside. Okay. And that way you don't have to worry about any burning of your of your product. You don't have to worry about the bottom burning. So just a little trick for those of you out there who would like to put the stove on a little high and walk away like me. I'm That's notorious a good tip. That's for good that. Tip, so you do need to watch it and keep stirring it constantly or right. it can burn yeah, before you right. know it. And with the, with the water, you don't have to worry so much about that. You can walk away and come back and do a little swirl and you know, walk away again, it's not, it's not quite as fussy. So awesome. that's just a little, little trick I picked up all along the way on creating mac and cheese, but especially with your recipe with the high fat, fat content of both the cream and the mac and, or of the Velveeta, so awesome. I think. 
you. Well, this recipe and many, many more are available in the Big Red Recipes cookbook. So I'd like to encourage you again to go to BigRedRecipes.com. You can learn more about all the guys who are in the book, um, see what they're cooking up, see what their nonprofits are. And then the book is widely available. You can order it on the website. You can get it through one of the nonprofits or through the guys themselves. And you can check out all these great recipes that these guys love to cook with their families. Some of them have been passed down through generations, all kinds of stories that go mm -hmm. along with cooking, which is one of the reasons why I love to cook and why I love putting together this recipe book. So many stories that go along with cooking. Don't you agree, Jay? I agree 100%. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad you guys had me come up and do this. It was, it's been a great time. Well, thank you so much. I want another bite of this and Do another you? drink of this. I think well, I think the I think this is drink first. The, the exactly. drink was really nice. John is doing a great job mm -hmm. for us every week to give us some drinks that are easy to prepare at home. And again, if they go to your website, they can find out where the what how to make these drinks too. So I think that's another benefit. Absolutely. To going to John the does does a great job with the pairings. We always send him the recipe a few days ahead of time. Let his brain start marinating and thinking what <laughs> goes well with this. I think he has a really good time with it. Um, so this one again, martinis. They can have vodka. They can have gin. I normally go for the vodka because I don't like the taste of gin. But I think this one's great. It's not overpowering at all. Um, and this is another one that you could just do the sour OJ syrup puree if you want a non-alcoholic beverage. Most of the beverages that John pairs for us, you can leave out the alcohol if you would like to have a non-alcoholic beverage. They're still pretty tasty. They are tasty. Yep. Well, that about wraps up our show for today. I want to thank you viewers for joining us again on the Big Red Kitchen Show. We're uh, happy to have you here. If you have seen a former Nebraska football player in a kitchen somewhere and you'd like to see them on the show, or perhaps you have a kitchen gadget you'd like to see demonstrated, we'd love to hear from you. If you send an email to the show at BigRedRecipes.com, we'll sure to get back with you. And Jay, I want to thank you so much for coming Thanks on the show. Thanks for having me. You showed me they, some new tricks I, with the Ninja. And I know. I'm glad you like the Ninja. And the new cheese. Yeah, yeah I want to make yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. A huge shout out to my amazing production crew. Without them, the show is not possible. They do a great job for us. So until next time, may God bless you and we'll see you again on the Big Red Kitchen Show. So let's try a little bit more of our yummy recipe mac now, and and mac and cheese. The Big Red Kitchen Show was brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, the Pampered Chef products provided by consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D Tendenza Food Styling, and Photography. <laughs>